Hello my friends and welcome! My name is Dennis and as you probably know I'm airline captain and today it's gonna be the video about the answers, questions and answers, answers and questions. So let's go! Pum, pum. Let's start my friends and the first question we have here from Abhirub Roy and sorry my friends I might pronounce your names, your nicknames or your names incorrectly because I'm not native English speaker and you also may write your names in different languages because we are a global community from all around the world. Well, uh, Abhira Broy asks me why Boeing 747-400 uh, retired? Why those planes retired? Well, basically because they're very old. They use old technologies for their engines, for their wing. They, had, uh, they have a lot of drag compared to new Boeing 747s. Uh, dash 8 and also they have the similar payload with the modern uh, big commercial airliners like Boeing 777X they have almost the same uh, similar payload so that is why they are not efficient they got retired and this crisis that we have nowadays it helped to retire those planes that's all I can say it's beautiful airplanes Boeing 747 I like them but as you can see they are not very efficient compared to new big jets with two engines so there you have four thirsty engines uh, with lots of fuel consumption and nowadays we have big planes uh, like Boeing 777 Airbus 350 uh, that have just two engines. Uh, will Boeing make a new and advanced version of Boeing 747? We actually do have Boeing 747-8. It's new advanced version. It's like Boeing 737 Max. So the similar type is for Boeing 747-8. And I would say it's a very efficient airplane, but they are no longer in production because still they have four engines, very thirsty compared to two engines and that is why it's mainly used for cargo transportation nowadays. So Silkway, Cargo Lux, they use this kind of 747-8 and also I think Lufthansa use this kind of airplane. Uh, which is your favorite airport? My favorite airport is here, Barispo, my home base and yes I like it because it's just near to my home, 15 minutes away. Which is your favorite flight route? I like short routes, maybe, because you're always, always uh, doing something, you're always busy. So I have I had flights to Minsk, I like that. Also I like flights to Vilnius and to Prague, Warsaw, Warsaw. So you fly um, short haul uh, routes and you're always busy, take off landing, take off landing. I would like to fly like this at least like six or four times per day but we allow to fly like this only four uh, flights per day the short flight so i like the stuff i don't really like sitting in the plane i like to do something in a plane a question from tina liu if you had the chance to fly somewhere would you fly to australia to samoa or pacific islands like fiji tonga new zealand and hawaii etc <clears throat> of course i would like to fly there i would like to visit as many airports as many places as possible maybe i would like to film my takeoffs landings over there my flights my vlogging there it will be absolutely fantastic and i was working for garuda indonesia you probably know that around four years ago i used to fly in that region but that region it's not the pacific region it's uh, indian ocean region i would say also many islands nice place so i like those you know island countries and the ocean is fantastic so of course i would like to fly there adil paradeep i hope i pronounced your name correctly hi pablo Bo. could you make some technical videos in between whether possible with actual airplane like showing the light test fire test and all uh, if possible only um, i think i can do it i think um, why not? We'll do the fire test. I think it will be it will not be so interesting as takeoffs and landings. But if you like to, maybe I'll try. Maybe I'll try and see how many views I'll have for that. <laughs> we'll see. A question from Susanta Malik. Uh, Susanta, I do remember you. I read all of your comments. Um, so this guy commenting under most of my videos. And guys, I do read all of your comments. So don't hesitate to put your comment just below and under any of my videos and I'll try to answer to all of you. So uh, Sasanta asks me, my next question for you, um, what's your full real name? I'm waiting. 
Okay, my real name is Dennis and Dennis Davidov. So the first name is Dennis, the surname is Davidov. And also my father is Sergei, so I'm Sergevich. Dennis Davidov Sergevich. So it's my full name. Again, the question from Tina Liu. Then you take flights uh, from your home base to UK. Do you land at the same airport every time or different airports uh, in UK? Love your videos from Australia. Greetings to Australia. And yes, we take only one airport. Uh, we used to take. Now the UK is closed for us due to this crisis, Corona crisis. But I hope they will open. And we flew to Gatwick International Airport. By the way, it's the busiest airport in the world with a single runway. Actually, it has two runways, but the only one runway is in use. Uh, so whether it's uh, north or south runway. But anyway, uh, it's one of the busiest, busiest airport. And also the Heathrow Airport is going to be open for us probably. I had some rumors that um, they don't have enough slots to fill the Heathrow Airport. So maybe it will take the slots to fly to Heathrow. And our alternative is usually London Stansted. And basically we fly only to London from all UK airports. At least there, it's okay. I like to fly to London. Um, next question from Paradroid. Hmm. Then descending in the Boeing 737. Then do you use level change? Then do you use vertical speed and why? Well, uh, you also may use VNAV. I mainly use VNAV because it calculates the profile. It has all the data. I mean, you put the wind information, you put everything, it has the points. But however, in some of the cases you use level change. Level change basically gives you the idle thrust during the descent, so your thrust levels will go to retard, and you put the speed. The more speed you have, the faster, uh, the faster you will descend. Um, and you need to admit that. So if you need to, if you are high and you need to go down to reach your descent, normal descent profile, I usually use level change. So I. Put the level change and increase the speed and you are not controlling the vertical speed the airplane follows uh, your indicated airspeed or mach by pitching up or pitching down so during the climb you put the altitude uh, higher than yours and you climb towards it you use the maximum thrust during the descent level change will give you other thrust so you need to realize it Sometimes then we'll get vector from the air traffic control, uh, for example, maintain speed to 50. And I'm seeing that I'm a little bit above the profile. If I use 250, I put the level change and maybe I'll use the speed brake in that case. For vertical speed, um, vertical speed you uh, may use to uh, calculate your prof profile more pre in more precise way. So usually I go with VNAV, but then I'm approaching the final approach fix and it depends on circumstances. I change to vertical speed. I may also correct my indi indicated airspeed, but the automatic flight control system gives priority in maintaining the vertical speed. And it's more precise for your profile calculations. For example, I know that I need to lose, for example, 2000 feet. Uh, to reach the final approach fix in two minutes. So that is why I'm putting vertical speed of 1000 feet in, in two minutes. I'll reach the final approach fix exactly at the prescribed altitude. And then I will intercept the localizer and the glide slope. So basically I need to film one more video about this stuff. It will be very long topic for us to discuss in here, but basically level change for maintaining your airspeed well, full thrust or idle thrust and vertical speed, the airplane maintains the preset vertical speed. Let's go next. The username random stuff, literally random stuff. It's a nickname. A question. Uh, what does it mean then the ATC says a pilot discretion, descend and maintain. Uh, what does a pilot discretion means? and what you can exercise your discretion that ATC say so. Well, actually, descent to flight level 350, pilot discretion means that then you really descend. So you don't have the traffic below, you're not interfering with anyone. So the ATC will just give you the clearance and then you're ready, you go descend. That's the pilot discretion. For turn at pilot discretion, 
heading 130. Then you're ready, go and execute the ETC clearance. Pam pam. A question from Malik Bugra Bildik. Thanks for answering my question, Captain, and I have one more question. What is the purpose of the 80 knots scale-out during takeoff? Well, it's the usual stuff. You take off, you start your takeoff roll, the airspeed is rising, and at 80 knots, the pilot monitoring calls 80 knots and pilot line tells clouds checked. So 80 knots checked. The purpose of this scale-out, there are several purposes. The first is to check your airspeed, that it's correct, 80 knots, 80 knots, and that you have the airspeed indication in your primary flight display. Actually, then I call check. I also look at the first officer display to check whether his or her flight instrument displays the same volume. And also it's the incapacitation callout. If you are pilot monitoring, you call out 80 knots. And also you need to look at this moment for your partner, whether he or she is okay and not incapacitated. If you see the signs of incapacitation or you haven't received the checked uh, call out from your partner, or reject the takeoff. And the other purpose for this uh, call out is to whether or not to perform high, high speed reject takeoff or low speed reject takeoff. Well, up to 80 knots, we reject takeoff in case of system failure, takeoff configuration mooring, uh, master caution, tire failure, side window open, aircraft and uh, normally slow acceleration, unusual noise or vibration, engine failure, fire fire warning, aircraft unsafe, unable to fly, predicted wind shear. After 80 knots, you perform the high speed reject takeoff and you may perform the reject only in case of engine fire, engine failure, fire fire warning, aircraft unsafe, unable to fly, or predicted wind shear. So after 80 knots call out, you realize that you need to stop only in case of four reasons, not in case of all the reasons. Only in case, for example, you have side window open after 80 knots, you continue take off. Before 80 knots, you reject. Let's continue. We have the question from Scaf Studios. That's the nickname of the person. And he or she asks me, what are some features or things you wish uh, the Boeing 737 had? Actually, I'd like to have some features uh, from modern airplanes like uh, maybe Embraer or Airbus to be installed in my, comp in my cockpit of my Boeing 737. I like my cockpit, but I think it is quite old school. Uh, understand me correctly, my friends. I, we have the overhead panel, even on Boeing 737 Max. Uh, it's almost the same with Boeing Jurassic with Boeing 737 200 that was released in 60s. So it's quite old-fashioned cockpit, if you know what I mean. And I would like to see the electronic checklist. I miss it actually. I had it flying the ETR 72600. So if something goes wrong with the airplane, for example, engine fire. The memory item, you don't really need to know. Well, you need to know memory items, but if you forget it, you will have it on your display. So engine fire automatically triggers the electronic checklist and you follow it step by step. If you forget something in case of the stressful situation, you still have the reminder. And then you deal with the problem with the fire. It goes with the engine, one engine landing checklist. So you don't need, if you have engine, uh, engine failure, you have two options, restart or single engine uh, landing. So something like this, my friend. I think it's very, very safe. And also I'd like to see the automatic rudder movement in case of engine failure. So as it is on Airbus, uh, I'm putting a lot of Airbus stuff because I know it works and it helps you to reduce your, maybe the level of anxiety. It helps you to control the airplane. So I'd like to see those modern features installed on Boeing 77. As for fly-by-wire, I don't think I don't think that I would like to have it on Boeing 737. It's the flight control system so far is nice. I like those cables. I like this old style flight control system. The second question from SCAF Studios. If given the chance and the train, would you uh, fly a military jet or well, just to fly around for a couple of minutes and land? Military jet. Maybe just for that purpose, my friend, because I, I like military jets. I would I like the maneuverability of those planes. So I would like to try the aerobatic flights. I'd like to fly somewhere very high in supersonic speed and see the surroundings. It's superb. But I would not like to serve to fly the military jet in some kind of army. 
because uh, I compare military jets with the, with the guns they made to kill the people. And I would never fly that aircraft for the purpose it was built to. I would never, you know, fire the rocket to kill someone. You may call me pacifist or something, but I would never shut down the other plane or kill another, another person. Let's go next. A question from Nikat Hudeberdiv. Great video as always, but I still don't get what difference between 80s broadcast and wall-made broadcast transmission. I heard both and I got the same information. Thanks for your attention. Thanks for your question, Nikat. And also the 80s information and wall-made information is a little bit different. Well, it's uh, almost the same for the weather information, but 80s, the automatic terminal information service, will give you more information for a particular airport. For example, if you fly from Antalya to Brispol, you may listen to Odessa Volmet and you have the information for Odessa, for Brispol, for Chisinau and some other airports. So you noted it and maybe you have the weather information for your, not only for your destination, but also for your alternate airport. And uh, then you listen to ATIS, you have more detailed information for your let's say destination airport, If that, before you descend to Burispol, you may listen to, you need to listen to ATIS information. You need to confirm that information to ATC, that you listen, for example, to information alpha. And you also have detailed information, what run in use, which run in use, whether it's contaminated, dry or wet, whether some taxiways are closed, whether some runways are closed. So we have some additional information to the weather, not only about the weather, but uh, for surround the airport environment itself. So you need to listen for ATC information and confirm it with ATC. But for Walmart, you don't really need to listen it. It's not mandatory. And also, Walmart information in future, it, it's already it's already been replaced by data link, by SATCOM and systems like ACARS. So you may put every airport you want and you receive the digital data to your MCDU. You may check the weather and why would you need the Walmart. So I think in several years, we'll get rid of those uh, Walmart stations everywhere. And you may also check the Walmart frequency at, at Vicha frequency. And if you fly long haul routes, you may check it out on H, HF frequency. Depends on region you fly in. Uh, next question from Dhruv Jain, the Yuk Boy Music. Oh, what a nice uh, nickname. Hi. Can the autopilot completely take over the pilot job? Means can the computer take over completely? Uh, you may check out my video. I don't remember the name. I'll put it in the link. Um, it's something like can the autopilot uh, overcome the pilot in the future, the human pilot. I think it will happen. It's just my opinion, my friends. I'm not the scientist or something, but what I see is we have more and more automation in our flights. Now the airplanes may take off automatically. Before it wasn't possible. But now, for example, Airbus 350, it may take off from what I know. They already tested for that. The problem we have with automatic systems nowadays is that automatic systems cannot think, they cannot study from their mistakes, they cannot make the decisions. That is why we fly the airplanes, because we can think outside the box, outside the rules, because you cannot write a program for every situation. So the automatic system may follow the programmed flight, but if that program flight would lead to the crash, the system will still fall it. We still can recognize, humans may recognize uh, the failure of the system itself, of the program, and we can perform differently outside the box, outside the rules. I think that is why the main reason why we are still in a cockpit. But in future, we'll have advanced automatic system, the artificial intelligence, like neural link, probably you know it, and then artificial intelligence may learn from its own mistakes. So the mind of this artificial intelligence will be the same with the human humans. That is why in future, of course, commercial aviation will be piloted by the autopilots, by artificial intelligence, Neuralink autopilots. 
Now you may say that passengers won't fly on that kind of airplanes, but in future we'll be surrounded by these automatic systems. It will be everywhere. We'll drive the automatic cars. We will have automatic kettles, automatic apartments, houses. Everything will be automatic. And in this kind of automatic environment, it will be pretty much okay to fly the automatic plane. It will be, I think, not in this century. But we'll still have, uh, I think we'll still have jobs on smaller planes uh, like uh, Twin Otter or Cessna Caravan. If you've seen the uh, series of National Geographic, the worst place to be a pilot, uh, you know what I mean. And I would highly recommend to check out that series. So I hope I answered your question here. Pum, pum. A question from Richard Burris. Does your airline have collective bargaining, bargaining or union? Yes, we do have a union. We have the uh, union, the big union in our uh, airline, and also we have separate pilot union. And I think it's it's great to have that uh, in any of airline because um, there were the cases that pilots got sick, you know, seriously sick, and we have some support from the union. So of course we invest some some of the some part of our salary actually for for us very low part for our salary but if everyone will invest that small money totally you have a lot of money and that money may be spent for uh, good things like fixing someone's house or maybe in case someone maybe if something will happen to me i know that unions may help uh, also my family so i think it's a great uh, thing to have unions uh, from this part and also unions represent pilots uh, general opinion uh, to the management of the airline we have nice negotiation with the management we have good attitude we have total understanding of what we need and uh, we understand what management need especially in this uh, critical time of covid crisis so it's a good thing i think to have the union and we have the strongest union probably from all the ukrainian airlines again the question from Druv jan jain the nuke boy music uh, and he has lots of questions i will answer those this time but next time guys let's um, let's ask just two questions i want everyone to appear as much as possible if you appear in this uh, uh, video series of answering your questions that's why two questions not more all right so question number one please explain a brief about the boeing 737 max what happened and why it happened i'm thinking about uh, making the video what happened to Boeing 737 Max? Actually, many of the pilots, uh, pilots, bloggers, did this kind of videos. You may check out main Mentor Pilot and his videos. Um, and I also want to make such videos. And from what I can tell you, that it's not 100% of Boeing mistakes. Uh, it mistake with Boeing 737 Max. It is also a human factor and pilot mistake. I, th I think it's the same level and i'll make the video about it uh, but not i will not answer this question right now because it will take all the videos so sorry uh, wait for a video about the boeing 77 max question number two for highest capacity of passengers uh, what are, were traveling before the pandemic would the airlines use bigger planes or smaller fuel efficient planes um, as i see from now they retire the bigger planes because they don't have such uh, numbers of passengers traveling everywhere so it's better of course to fly to be type rated for uh, on boeing 737 or airbus 320. Uh, before we travel big airplanes before the crisis and we will travel big airplanes and now they're traveling but not so much they're using the big planes uh, because um, Sometimes you have enough capacity uh, for the passengers you have and you may travel long haul flights uh, using big planes and some airports have so many flights that it's better to uh, take one big plane there with lots of passengers rather than have uh, three small flights on let's say Boeing 737. That is why in our line, in our airline we had Boeing 777, so now we don't have them because now passengers won't just fly in crisis. 
So that is why we'll fly 737. And I think it's the best type rating for the pilot. Your next question, why are they retiring big airplanes? Uh, then the number of passengers that are flying is higher. No, it is not higher, it's much lower. We are in the deepest aviation crisis. So that is why they're retiring big airplanes. Why are they retiring, for example, Airbus 380s? Because the payload for, uh, let's say for Airbus 380, and it's just three tons higher compared to Boeing 777-300ER. And uh, Airbus has four engines and Boeing 777 has two big but very efficient engines. That is why big airplanes go to retire, big old airplanes. Well, the Airbus 80 is not very old, but still it has lots of fuel consumption. It's very heavy even compared to Boeing 777. Can aircraft manufacturers install the efficient engines in big airplanes like Boeing 747? It uh, was the last question from Juvjan the Yuk Boy Music. And yes, they installed already the very efficient engines as far as I know on Boeing 737 uh, 747-8. It's more efficient compared to Boeing 747-400. I think they still have it, but as far as I know, it's no longer in production. You may not change, you could not change the Boeing 747 to fly with just two engines because you need to change the airplane completely. Uh, That's why we have Boeing 777 uh, flying around and Boeing 777X will be the biggest airplane in production very soon. I think it is already now. The next uh, airliner world Boeing 777, it's the nickname, asks me, are airplane bird strikes dangerous? Well, they are, they could be dangerous, depends on uh, what airspeed you'll, at what airspeed you'll hit the bird, depends on the size of the bird, depends on what, uh, at what stage of flight you are. We all know the Miracle on the Hudson case, then they hit the bird passing 2,800 feet as far as I remember. So very low to the ground, uh, both engines lost with huge birds. So sometimes it happens, yes, and could be dangerous. But in most of the cases, you hit just small birds and you don't even have uh, any dents or scratches on your airplane. You just need to wash it. That, that's it. All right. Uh, Pablo Abel. Mora Moras de Ga, Garcias, sorry, I spelled your name uh, not correctly. How old did you start studying? Uh, so I started my uh, training, then I was 17 years old. I uh, went to National Aviation University here in Kyiv and I graduated from uh, the Flight Academy in Kyrgyzstan and I was 21 and I I've, I started to fly as first officer then I was 21 years old and at 25 years old I became a captain uh, very fast. Pam pam. All right, the question from Sagar Buel. Captain, uh, what is done if engine fails during cruise? You guys continue towards the destination airport or land immediately in the nearest airport? Uh, okay we land at the nearest suitable airport well first you may try to restart the engine if you have just engine failure like flame out from inside your combustion chamber still you need first to descend so you declare pan pan and if you lose the speed you cannot maintain the assigned flight level let's say 360 flying just one engine so you need to declare the urgency or emergency that depends on your conditions and ATC will give you the clearance to descend and you usually descend it depends on the weight the maximum flight level you can uh, fly in one engine and that information about w the highest level that you can fly on one engine you might find in your MCDU so just check it out and you put the flight level that you will able to maintain using one engine but during the descent you may go to engine flight start checklist and you may restart the engine and then continue towards your destination airport or if the restart is not possible the QRH says let me open it mm, engine failure or shutdown checklist for example in case of engine failure 
if you attempt, uh, if you if restart will not be attempted, plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. It does mean that you need to choose the closest airport, maybe local air club, and fly there and let your land your Boeing 737. It means that you need to listen to weather information. You need to consider uh, the even the firefighting category for the particular airport. You need to consider the weather information and because with one engine you can on Boeing 737 you may land only uh, with category the minimum for your landing is not lower than category one for airbus as far as i know it's category three so here the airbus wins so listen to the weather uh, do the proper research for what airport would you like to fly to also you, because you are descending because you will be very low you go to dri with drip down procedure you need to check what terrain are you flying over because for example maybe in alps or something the mountains may be very high and your minimum uh, altitude manual flight level that you can maintain on one engine may be lower than the mountains so you need to consider all that stuff and fly to the safest uh, nearest possible airport and land there one more question from Sagar Boyel. In what type of weather flying becomes challenging? <laughs> well, it may be very different. It may be challenging, then you have the maximum components, for example, for your crosswind. It, can, it may be challenging, then you land with a, in a poor visibility conditions. Uh, it may be challenging if you land on a um, very slippery runway. So, it may be challenging sometimes. There are lots of lots of restrictions, lots of weather uh, that you uh, that you always need to consider. The weather formation, maybe thunderstorms. So once I had to go around two times at one flight because I haven't seen anything at decision altitude, flying my ATR in a wet season of Indonesia. So I was flying, I haven't seen anything. Okay, go around. We did a go around, hold some time, then go again. Haven't seen anything again. Go, we went around, and from the third time we landed. So it was quite challenging, yes, but nothing, nothing serious because we trained to deal with that stuff. And the one thing you need to do if you are not sure that you can overcome the challenging weather, you need just to go around and go to your alternate airport with better weather. Or if you have the uh, actual weather more than your limits, for example, the crosswind limit for Boeing 737 for the dry runway is 33 knots. So if you have higher than that, for sure, don't tr don't even try the approach. Go around for your alternate. Question from Captain Reynolds. Outside of affordability and SIM setup, what reservations do you have about Zebo and explain. I haven't tried Zebo and explain. From what I saw on YouTube, the Zebo is nice and explain is also very close to Flight Simulator 2020. And you have more detailed model there uh, for Flight Sim 2020. We don't have uh, Boeing 737 for explain we have and if you download the proper scenario download the airport surroundings the graphics will be very close to what we have on fly simulator 2020 so maybe in, flu in future i'll try now i fly uh, prepare 3d flight simulator pmdg boeing 737 model and i like it it's very very detailed and i use flight simulator 2020 just for my joy purposes just just as a game and also i would like to film maybe new video in the future we'll see let's move to the next speedbird on youtube asks me why did you stop flying the atr 72 actually i was flying atr 72 uh, for a long seven years and it was time to change for jet airplane and also Garuda Indonesia say to all of the expat pilots that they will not renew our contracts. So I started to search for the job and luckily you Ukraine to National Airlines, they were hiring first officers at that point. So I applied there, I passed the interview and I went to fly here from my home. And it's, it was the great decision, my friends. I like Boeing 737, I like jet airplanes. I also like the ATR 72, but it, it was time for me just to move forward, you know. And what I have now is absolutely fantastic. 
I have friends in my airlines. I have great flights, great airplanes, and I'm very happy flying from here. It is not the question, my friends, but it's just a comment from Boeing 737 pilot named Johnny. My non-normals in the last year on Boeing 737. Airspeed and reliable, jammed flight controls, crack windows, broken pressure seals in the cockpit windows, <laughs> APU going inoperative at an airport with no air starter unit. <laughs> Not having much luck. <laughs> Wow, wow, you have so many things happening to you flying so but it's a good experience from other side. I haven't have experienced all of this, uh, but yeah, you have a nice ex in one year it's yeah, go to the church or where <laughs> or to the mosque. I don't know what your beliefs are, but it's better to <laughs> to get rid of that not good luck. <laughs> crazy but you were able to write this comment it means that you were able to get out from these difficult situations and the worst from what i can see is airspeed are unreliable and the uh, jam flight controls man it's a uh, very difficult situations you had uh, actually i know a couple of people who had the airspeed unreliable it's very difficult uh, malfunction you need to realize that you have airspeed unreliable as soon as possible and don't trust the false airspeed indicator and there were a couple of accidents involving that failure as for jam flight controls we're also trained to deal with it on flight simulators but in real life i don't know anyone who experienced that kind of failure on real airplane uh, write in the comment what kind of flight controls were jammed because it's very very interesting for me Crack windows, it's okay. Uh, broke pressure seals. APU going and up at uh, the airport with no air starter. Well, just go there, uh, shut down probably the engines, and stay there waiting for ACU to arrive from other airport. Probably it was like this. Write more, uh, more comments about your cases. Very, very interesting to know for me, especially for jam flight controls. Whether what 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 was it? Rudder, uh, ailerons, elevator. So just tell me, my friends. Don't forget to put your questions here just now. Just uh, ask me in the comment section below. Uh, put your one question or two questions maximum because I want everyone to participate our uh, questions answers answers questions uh, topic in next video so if you put many many questions I'll answer I may answer only to one guy that's all so put to maximum all right let's let's do it as procedure and uh, thank you very much for watching thank you very much for asking all of your questions I will try to answer to all of you and what you need to do is follow our regular awesome guy checklist first you need to like this video then subscribe to my channel ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time pam pam